under the bright full moon and the stars lighting up the darkness. You would think that this is a scene of serenity. How wrong is that? It is never peaceful. Not when you are a juvenile Anodontosaurus. Surrounded by enemies, his only way of survival is by hiding in the shadows. This is Andom and the story of the Armored Meatball. The sight of an Eotriceratops is quite reassuring. The big herbivore might serve as a distraction for the hungry group of Giganotosaurus. The track is also equipped with one of the most impressive weapons seen in the Dinosaur Kingdom, so hopefully he could probably take one with him. Seeing the carnivores leave is a good sign and at the same time, a bad one. Not knowing your enemy location is a nerve-wracking position. In the end, Andon will have no choice but to leave the safety of the shadows. No matter how dangerous the situation is, food and water are essential. You must stay vigilant. Enemies might be lurking around the corner. Luckily, his small size grants him access to areas not reachable for big creatures. Ando will have no choice but to live like this every day until his adulthood. This world doesn't only contain enemies. The Eo Triceratops from earlier has gotten you company. During parenthood, the adult will be on highest guard and show aggression towards any that would do their offspring harm. But with Anton being herbivore, they will have no problem being peaceful. In Anton's advantage, he could use both of them as distraction. It might sound cruel, but in a world full of danger, you will play whatever card you got. A long time has passed and lots of boring growth has been cultivated. Andon is now an adult. It is only as an adult that you can experience some sort of peace in this cruel world, with night and the fog making the perfect atmosphere to look for food. The fog will be of no hindrance to Andon's sight. He already has a bad eyesight and realize more on his nose. The sound of Giganotosaurus, however, will be a hindrance. While not realistically accurate about the dinosaurs having human-level intelligence, they most certainly do on Gardua. One might never know if a clever carnivore would use the fog for an ambush. But if one does, Andon will be ready. Having made his way back to areas from childhood, he keeps doing his activities to achieve an appearance transformation. Of course, he can never do such things without company.
a pair of Giganotosaurus. Most likely the same ones from Anton's childhood. One wouldn't be too much of a problem, but two can cause some concern. Luckily, they seem more interested to get some water. The passing Dinochirus, who also seems to be heading towards water, is about to get a surprise of his life. Chaos seems to find those who seek it the least. Luckily for Andon, this time it seems like the chaos doesn't revolve around him. A juvenile Pycnotosaurus seems to size up the pair of Pycnotosaurus and is accompanied by what looked like to be an adolescent Pycnotosaurus. This is a good example of natural selection. I seem to have spoken too early about these creatures having human level intelligence. It's common knowledge to never fight something that is thrice your size. Too close for Anton. Be it the Pycnol or the Giganotosaurus. Should they come in his personal space, he will swing his tail. It seems like one of the Pycno has fallen, and the other is fleeing. One adult Giga, however, is no match for Andon. He has the guts to just pass his hungry carnivores. But why? Because he can. He has the strength to back it up. The goal of him achieving a character transformation requires him to gather shells, so he will have to stroll along the beach and gather some shells. He seemed to have spot a Sachikasaurus climbing on the rocks on the cliffside. An unusual place for such a large marine reptile. Giving creatures a higher level of intelligence also gives them lots of curiosity. Best to just leave them to his activities. Seeing that this beach has dried up for shells, Andon will have no choice but to cross the water. But with the Sachikasaurus right there, it is a high chance that he will go for Andon. He will have to go now while he is on land. Clear water grants visibility for any enemies, and just as predicted, the Sachikasaurus hurries into the water. But it's too late. He will have to wait until Andon has to return to the mainland, and he knows that. After gathering all the shells here, he now has to cross the water again, and this is what the Sachikasaurus has been waiting for. If Andon wants to go back, he will have to teach this marine reptile a lesson that he is not to be trifled with. With one being a water-based creature and the other a land-based creature, Andon will have to take it near the water, but not far enough where he completely loses his advantage. Andon's tail has a club that can break the bones of even the strongest of apexes. This Sachikasaurus will be no different.
the Pleosaurus has had enough and instead are going for the unfortunate Tsukimimus in the area. Too bad for him, the Tsukimimus is a bit too fast for him. Now the question begs, will he attack with Undon crossing the water? He has already taken quite a beating and it seems that he doesn't want more. Undon has defeated this water creature, but he is about to face another. An attack so fast that even the cameraman didn't catch the beginning of it. An attack from a Spinosaurus. Though hardly a threat. Just like a lone Giganotosaurus, a Spinosaurus alone is no threat. With a roar that boosts morale and defense, the Spinal retreats. Undo makes sure that he gets the message. Do not mess with me. Let that be a warning to your entire kin. It is one thing to have Apexes wishing you for dinner. There's another thing having someone who is not worthy hunting you. The might of a Spinosaurus, the toughness of an Adolotosaurus, and the nerve of this wannabe T-Rex. Bone breaking someone to remove mobility of someone who is the strongest when not moving is a stupid strategy. Undon has decided that it's not even worth it to defend against the Despletosaurus attack. It is too weak. Right now, he will use his own strategy against him. However, having your main attack on your tail where there's low visibility is a rather advantage for the desperate souls. It would seem that the broken bone is now healed. It doesn't change the fact that the hunter is now the hunted. His attacks are too weak to deal any serious damage to Undon. This is just one big joke to him. The Despletosaurus is wary. He knows he needs to avoid the bow break. He does not want to go through all that punishment again.
the Despoidosaurus has had enough and is now leaving. Anton, however, seems to want him out of the area. He cannot focus on his activities if this guy is going to come back. Revenge is sweet, but so are berry bushes. Once Anton has chased him off long enough, he will head back to the bushes. You live to fight another day. Anton now has achieved character transformation and is now pure white. The Spinosaurus seems to want a close look. A bit too close. And don't just stand there. Anton is within tail reach of the Spinosaurus. Should either side show any form of aggression, conflict will ensue. The intention of the Spino is unclear, but no carnivores can get so close without a warning. Not full aggressive call, but still a warning. That one's too close, mister. Stay back. And this time, it's for real. Trying to go for the head on an Archivosaurid is futile attempts. Even the eyes are armored. The Spino will have no choice but to go head to head. Correction, tail to tail. Andun is at a disadvantage. The spinal tails has longer reach. He will have to time it perfectly so he can damage the spinal by hitting its tail. This is a ridiculous battle. By hitting the Spino on his tail, the damage is reduced. And hitting Andon while he's crouched, the damage is also reduced. For this battle to end, Andon's gotta change the battle strategy. Leaving from his crouched position, is now at a disadvantage. He quickly assumes Crash's position again and continues the battle elsewhere. But this is closer to the water. It would seem that the Spino has had enough, and frankly, so has Andon. Having a tail size measuring contest will be of no use for anyone. On another note, battle was interesting though, no matter how ridiculous. This is a story of how someone who had to live in shadows can now stand proud side by side with the strongest
Okay, I just found my lost manuscript, and it would seem that I did something wrong. I, According to this script, Aldon should have died to that Spinosaurus. Oh well. Okay, timeline is safe now. <laughs>